Hi. So, in this part, we're going to talk about how to graph or think about or combine absolute values. So, let's take a concrete example that we're going to solve here. Let's look at the following. Let's look at absolute value 2x minus 5 minus the absolute value of 7 plus 3x. Okay, let's, let's work on how are we going to combine these two absolute values um, to get ourselves a piecewise function. In fact, when we do this, we're going to get a piecewise, we're going to get a piecewise function that contains three pieces. Okay, and that, that's pretty much true in general. If you have two absolute values added or subtracted, you're going to get a piecewise function with three pieces. And the reason why you have three pieces is because if we look at this function, the question we have to ask is where is this where is this first absolute value equal to zero? Well that's going to be equal to zero at five halves. Okay? And where is this absolute value going to be equal to zero? So five halves we'll put that over here somewhere. Okay? Maybe this will be zero. And then over here what we're going to have is we're going to have minus 7 over 3, right? So that's going to be down here somewhere, minus 7 over 3, okay? Those are where these two absolute value functions are equal to 0. And those two numbers divide the real line into three segments. They divide the real line into these three segments. So we're going to have x less than minus 7 over 3. So that's this part of the line. Then we're going to have x that's going to be bigger than minus 7 over 3 and less than 5 halves. Okay, or we can say like that. That's going to be this middle piece here. Okay. And then finally we're going to have this piece of the real line, which is x bigger than 5 halves. Okay. And on each of these three pieces, we can solve... Uh, we can simplify each absolute value and we can combine the terms 2x minus 5 and 7 plus 3x plus or minus a plus or minus um, to, cr to construct a, a piecewise function with three pieces. One, one uh, we're going to get a linear, we're going to get either a linear or constant term um, on each of the three pieces. That's pretty much the profile. Um, I'm going to clear the boards and then we're going to go to work. How you work on each of these three intervals is exactly the same. The logic is exactly the same. The answers we're going to get, the, the solutions will be different because we're going to be doing different different algebra, but the, the logic is exactly identical. So if you can do one piece, you can do all of the pieces. So try to follow the logic and then work the algebra. Okay, so let's work on part one, which will be x less than minus seven thirds. Okay. So the logic goes like this. Let's look at the let's look at our let's look at our first absolute value function, which is uh, seven. Well, the first one is two x minus five. So two x minus five. Um, that is going to be two x minus five will be negative anywhere less than five halves. So certainly when you're less than minus seven thirds that one's going to be negative. So 2x minus 5 is going to come in as minus 2x minus 5 into this part of the equation. Then we're going to have minus. There's nothing we can do about that minus sign. And then the question is what comes next? So to the left of minus 7 thirds, 7 plus 3x will be negative. So we have to take its opposite to enforce the absolute value. Okay, so we're going to have two minus signs here. And use parentheses, please. 7 plus 3x. Okay. Now we're done. Now, now we're, we've removed the absolute values. How did we do that? Because we looked at a particular region. On that region, we evaluated the sign of each of these terms. We used the abs definition of absolute value to liberate the piece. Now we're just going to do the algebra. So this part should be, this part should be really straightforward for you. Minus 2x 
plus 5. And then a minus and a minus cancel. And we're going to get plus 7 plus 3x. Okay. So when we wrap that all up, what do we get? We're going to get x okay, plus uh, 12. Okay. So this is what our function looks like on this piece. Okay. On x less than minus 7 thirds, our, our piecewise function looks like x plus 12. Okay. And then at, at and that, that will be then what, what it will be on the next piece we have to figure out just now. Okay. <coughs> so I'm going to clear the boards and then we're going to work that piece. But again, it's going to be exactly like this piece. It's like, you know, SOS different day. Okay. Okay, for this next part, what have we got? We're looking at the interval between minus 7 thirds. So we have minus 7 thirds is less than x, less than or equal to x, and less than 5 halves. Okay. So what's going to be true on this piece? On this piece, 7 plus 3x will be positive. So we're just going to leave it alone. On the other hand, 2x minus 5 will still be negative because it's to the left of 5 halves. So we still have to negate that part. So we have negative 2x minus 5. And then we're going to have a minus 7 plus 3x. Okay. Now we're going to combine these. We're going to get minus 2x plus 5 minus 7 minus 3x. Okay. So we're going to get minus 5x, and in the middle here, what are we going to get here? Minus 5x minus 2. Okay. So this is our function. This is our function on the second piece. Okay. On the first piece, we found x plus 12. At the end, we'll put this all together and graph it. But for right now, this is this is the function that we've gotten on the second piece. Now, you should take a minute while I clear the boards to work on the third piece. If you understand the logic of the first two pieces, which you should, um, go ahead and work out the third piece and see if your answer is going to agree with what I'm going to get. So either stop the video or, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's the easiest. Stop the video, work on a piece of paper, and then see if you get the same thing that I'm just going to get in a minute. And that's a good check because you never know I could get it wrong, which I usually do. Okay, back in a flash. Okay, final piece. We're working on the interval x bigger than 5 halves. On x bigger than 5 halves, both of these functions will be positive. So our equation will look like 2x minus 5 minus 7 plus 3x. Okay, and what we're going to get here is 2x minus 5 minus 7 minus 3x. Let's combine that so we're going to get minus x and then here we're going to get minus 12. Okay, which is the exact opposite of the function that we got for our first solution which was x plus 12. This is its exact opposite. Okay, all right so now we have the function on all three pieces. Um, let's, 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 I'm going to clear this and we're going to write that down. Okay, so our function f that we have discovered, combining these two absolute values, gives us the following piecewise function. It gives us x plus 12 when x is less than minus 7 over 3. It gives us minus 5x minus 2 when x is bigger than or equal to minus 7 thirds but less than 5 halves and it gives us minus x minus 12 when x is bigger than 5 halves okay so that is the solution of this function and I'm gonna clear all this nonsense and we're gonna graph this function okay alright be back in a sec okay so let's make an attempt to graph this function um, it's not going to look pretty, but, you know, we're not in the pretty business. We're just in the get it done business kind of thing. So, here we got minus 7 halves. 
Um, way back over here somewhere, we are going to have minus 12, okay, which is where our first function will cross the axis. Um, it at minus uh, seven thirds. This should be seven thirds. Um, x plus 12 is going to look like this. What's that going to work out to be? So minus 7 thirds plus 36 over 3. Uh, that is going to be something like 29 over 3. Okay. Um, so something something a little less than little less than 10 uh, that's where that's where the first piece of our, our puzzle so we've got a positive slope it's going to come up here okay so on the other side let's let's draw let's draw five halves okay our middle function looks like well we just covered it up I think it's minus 5x minus 2 um, minus 5x minus 2 meets up at the same spot and it, if you have calculated, it comes down here so it's got a slope of minus 5 it comes down here somewhere um, to what should be minus 29 over 2 okay and then from here on the last piece we have the function minus x minus 12 which has a slope of minus 1 so that's much more gradual than the slope of minus 5 so it's going to go off like that so that's what our function looks like it's a piecewise function of three pieces um, and you can graph it for yourself this is a quick sketch um, but I'm good with quick sketches if you can sort of uh, do quick sketches like this you're you're in business in pre-calculus and calculus and well beyond okay so practice, enjoy, goodbye.